shall be added. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all shall be Beautiful. Thank you. Good morning. How's everyone doing? <laughs> well, good morning. Um, this is Trinity United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Gina, and I'm glad you're here. If it's not going the best for you, it will soon, or at least that's my hope and my prayer. Do we have any announcements to make before we get started?
Okay, I'd like to tell you that the, the Christmas tree in the hallway is for um, the Thanksgiving in gathering. We still have some ornaments with items that are needed, um, and we have some envelopes. So if you're not into shopping, you can simply write a check, and someone will do the shopping, or maybe even that amount would, would go to cover the cost of shipping. Either way, there's an option, an opportunity for you to be involved with the Thanksgiving in gathering. Are there other announcements we need to make? If you notice the beautiful flowers on the altar behind me, they are from Corey and Brielle uh, Alexander's wedding yesterday. Cor um, Corey Alexander and Brielle Ulrich were married yesterday here in our sanctuary. Um, and they said, please keep the, the flowers and share them with the folks at, on Sunday morning. So um, if you see them out and about, tell them thank you. Anything else going on? Then let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the blessings and for the opportunity to gather and to worship you. Lord, we just ask you to join us in this time, join us in this space. May all that we do and say bring honor and glory to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you join me in a responsive reading? Go. We step off the streets, away from places of work, shopping malls, billboards, and news broadcasts, to stand before the living God. We turn away from the world and the patterns of power that too often trap and swallow us up. We come to this sanctuary seeking the living God, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Our first song is hymn number 555, Forward Through the Ages. Because of COVID-19, one of the things we cannot do is sing, but you can sing, but you can hum with gusto. Our first scripture reading today comes to us from Exodus chapter 1, verse, starting in verse 8 through chapter 2, verse 10. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and stronger than we are. We must, take, we must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Python and Ramses as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks 
and do all the work in the field. They were ruthless in all their demands. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Sifra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this, he demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, the midwives replied. They are more vigorous and they they have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. So God was good to the midwives, and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all people, throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River. You may let the girls live. About this time, A man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of piperous reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance, watching to see what would happen. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she asked. Yes, do, the princess said. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she exclaimed, I lifted him up out of the water. Our second reading is from Romans, and it's not nearly as long. (laughs) Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. A living sacrifice to God. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, Be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. 
If God has given you leadership ability, take the leadership, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. The word of God for the people of God. I believe we have some special music. happen, but they're beautiful, aren't they? I can't wait to meet those kids. And I'm sure you can't wait to see them here again as well. And um, we come to the time for glory sightings. It's an opportunity to share where you have seen God at work or share with others how God has blessed you. We, we do see God at work in Cedar Rapids. Yay. Thank a line, man. That is a glory sighting. Any others? I saw it yesterday at the wedding. You saw? Yesterday at the wedding. Mm -hmm. They came down to each other, and then you had mentioned that the groom said something about he wanted to get married at this church because it would be an honor to stand before God. Mm-hmm. That was special. Yeah. That was special. The wedding yesterday with uh, Corey and Brielle, um, as they, they stood here in the sanctuary, proclaiming their love for each other and their vows. It was a beautiful day. Any other glimpses of God's goodness or God's glory? COVID?
Yeah, yeah. There's hope in the kids that you see in that video. But Wednesday, Solving and I met with the confirmation kids, and uh, I just wanted to hear what they'd been doing, what they'd learned. We um, had a great time in the in the gathering room, but we came in here, and and I asked him if Moses, um, if God gave, I asked him if God gave Adam or Eve the Ten Commandments. I know you, some of you laugh. They had to think about it, but then somebody actually came up with the answer, Moses. <laughs> so that gives me hope. That gives me hope. And to hear that um, one young man said, I, 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 well, I asked the whole group, why do you want to be confirmed? Why, why do you want to be confirmed? And he said, I want to be able to make decisions for this church. He said, I, I grew up here, and I want to make decisions to keep it moving forward. And I'm like, oh, that... That gives me hope. I, I don't know if you have goosebumps, but I do now again. But the confirmation kids and all that, that you folks have been doing to love them, raise them up, honor those baptismal covenants, and get them to that point. Thank you for all that you folks have done. Thank you, Solvig. Any other glimpses of God's goodness or God's glory? We had a wonderful rain, absolutely. Absolutely. Any others? Okay, how about blessings or burdens? Is there anything else we need to lift up to God? Absolutely. The teachers and the students and, and all the staff returning to school. And amen to that. Gracious Lord. Hear our prayer. Father, I might be in the hospital. You might be the one who has the most wonderful friend and the glory and the redeemer glory. Okay, so you, um, Katrina has a friend, Mike. He's in the hospital. Um, in Des Moines. In Des Moines. Yeah. And he has cancer. In the brain, in the lung, and the adrenal gland. Cancer in the brain, the lung, and the adrenal gland. Yeah. All right, so we lift Mike up in prayer. Gracious Lord. Any others? We continue to lift up Jane Southland. Continue to lift up LJ. He gets another shot in his hip this week. Um, who else? You know what? So Roger's um, cousin, uh, Peggy, next. Okay. All right, gracious Lord. Any others? All right, well, let's go to our Lord in prayer, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for the many, many blessings that you just pour upon us, for the folks who have electricity, for the men and the women who have provided it. Lord, we just give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks for um, bringing Corey and Brielle together in marriage yesterday and for confessing their love and, and making that covenant, those vows before you, their family and their friends. Lord, we give you thanks for the little ones that are singing in the videos, and we give you thanks for the confirmation kids who are growing up and re getting ready to, to be leaders in this, your church. What a blessing that is. 
Lord, in the midst of all the joys, we have some concerns, and we need your help. Lord, hear our hearts, know our prayers, know our pain. Lord, incline your ear to us and hear our prayer. Mighty God, we give you thanks for knowing our hearts, for hearing our prayers, for tending to the needs of others. Lord, we listed many people who are not at 100%. Some are maybe even on their way to see you. Lord, we just ask you to heal their bodies if that's your will. Help them to know their love and their peace right where they're at. And Lord, if it's a situation where you need to call them home, do so swiftly. But comfort that family in their time of grief. Lord, we know that when Jesus was with the disciples, he loved on them. He lived with them. He was one of them. Yet he was different. He was special. He taught them about your will and your way, your scriptures and your word. One of the great things he did was to teach those disciples to pray. And so we join in that same prayer in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our next song is hymn number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be, 399. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. It's Peter's declaration about Jesus. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, 
you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You didn't learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, I could have preached on any of these three sermons or scriptures. That last one I just absolutely love. What ha- what do you do when uh, you're told not to tell anyone? You got it. You tell everybody you know, and even if you tell just three close friends, everybody's gonna know, right? So that not that one. And I thought, well. I could have preached on Romans, and I've been in Romans for a while, the last few weeks, and I thought, let's just go to Exodus for a little bit. So this week and next week, I'll be preaching on the Exodus text. And I thought, you know, whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. Like, whoa, baby. And I got to thinking, (laughs) how many different ways can those two words come out? How many different ways or meanings can we come up with with just those two words? And I'm thinking, well, in our scripture, it was for real. The princess discovered a baby in a basket floating in the Nile River. And I know, I'm thinking when I read that text, she said, whoa, baby, for real, it's a child, it's a gift. She discovered that child had something special. And what she did with the child is, is absolutely fabulous. We'll come back to that. I'll circle around. I'll circle back. Um, I also got to thinking about the other ways to say, whoa, baby. And I, I came up with uh, fear, fright. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. No, no, whoa. Fear and fright, like maybe there's a snake. Anybody like snakes? Maybe you know how to say, whoa, baby, with me on that one then. I'm, I'm afraid of snakes. And then there's, a, from the wedding yesterday, the love that Corey and Brielle had for each other, like, whoa, baby, that's my man. Whoa, baby, that's my woman. Whoa, baby. That was, that was you're absolutely right, Katrina, that was great to see that love that they had for each other. Whoa, baby. And then then there's that, that that whoa, baby, that says stop and think. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. And think. You need to buy some time. You need to buy some space so you can think through what's next. Whoa, baby. And then there's that disappointment. When you discovered something went awry, whoa, baby, now what do we do? Same two words all along, just a different emphasis, just a different tone, different meaning, a different response or reaction. And then there's um, that surprise, that joy, oh, baby, yeah, I love it, yeah. That unbelievable joy. Yeah. Whoa, baby. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And then there's that, whoa, baby. I'm in trouble. I'm really in trouble. Whoa, baby. Now what? We wonder what comes next. And then there's that, now what? Whoa, baby. Those two words can come out in very different ways, have very different meanings, but the response and the reaction determines the context of those two words. In our scriptures, 
And the princess found that baby in a basket. She was delighted. She also recognized that um, someone gave up that child. Someone spared the life of that child. Someone defied instructions, didn't throw that baby into the river. But someone chose to raise that child as long as they could. There was something special about that child. They named the child Moses, the one that was lifted up out of the water. We know the rest of the story of Moses, or most of us do. I don't want to do the spoiler alert thing. Feel free to read on, uh, read ahead in, Je- in Exodus if you'd like. But we know that Moses was saved. He, his life was spared. We know that the child was special. And as I was thinking about um, the, the Exodus, the whole book of Exodus, the themes that come out, and we see it in our scriptures that the, the Egyptians are in control, that the leaders who were listening to God are no more, or maybe not right now. The Pharaoh is in control, and he's about himself. He's about building. He's about slaves. He's about oppressing others. But yet, in the midst of this theme, we have this child that is born. This child that is born and saved. This child is born in a very unlikely place and saved. And we know that he'll be sacrificed in a special way. That parallels the New Testament and the birth of Jesus. You know, as I was reading this again, I'm thinking, there's a parallel. This is familiar. This is pretty cool. How God sent this baby, this this small little baby, to get the attention of the world. And as we told the, the confirmation kids, our Bibles, are, it's a text that has passed, that has surpassed the test of time, lasting over 2,000 years. And for that story to still be in there has significant meaning. Every word in our scriptures have meaning and purpose and leads to something else. This text, this text about this baby being spared, being saved, even the mother, the princess, adopting this child as her own. I think that's pretty cool. You see, we are all adopted by God. God wants us to be in the family, and God wants us to know our value, our purpose, and our place. So if you've been baptized and you're hanging out with us today, you're a part of the family of God, and what a blessing that is. Know that that you can be forgiven and free, that you can be um, God's hands and God's feet. God has a purpose for you. If you're still here, raise your right hand. If you raise the wrong one, it's okay too. (laughs) Get them both up. (laughs) Get them both up. Repeat after me. I have value. My life has meaning. My, My life has purpose. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the scriptures that tell us about this little baby. Whoa, baby! What a gift you have given this world in giving us Moses. Because we know Moses is going to do some great things. He's going to be in touch and in tune with you. We know that his life was spared for a reason. Lord, we ask you to reveal to us in the scriptures what happens next so we can say, whoa, baby, look what God is doing. Not whoa, baby, but or whoa, baby, but whoa, baby, another child, another blessing, another gift from you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come now to the time of the offering. Yes, there we go. It's an opportunity to give back to the mission and the ministry of this, your church. Um, So there's an offering plate on the table in the back. For those who are visiting at home or worshiping at home with us, you can drop off your check at the church um, from 9 to 12 weekday mornings. We've made that commitment to be here. 
You can also mail it into the church if you're, you don't live in Fort Dodge. Um, the address is 838 North 25th Street, Fort Dodge, Iowa, 50501. And of course, if you'd like to just make your offering happen and not even think about it, which is what I do, um, you can uh, call the office and Kathy will help you set up an automatic giving uh, payment or an automatic giving gift to the church. Uh, it's kind of cool that our banks talk to each other. Um, so you have several options and ways to give, to make your generosity and your gift be known. Would you pray with me as we ask God to bless those gifts? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for the blessing of each and every gift. We ask you to bless not just the gift, but the giver as well. Lord, we, w we work hard for what we got. We know that what we have is a gift from you. We are grateful and we say thank you. Lord, I give you thanks for um, multiplying those gifts, for using them in mighty ways. Lord, our ministry and our work continues because you're a part of it. Lord, continue to lead us and to guide us. Draw us closer to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you join me in a corporate prayer for the offering? O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, you are our help in the midst of need and danger. Bless our gifts this day that they may find their way to those who feel hopeless and without resource. May our gifts be a sign of your hope and love. And may the people we help find their way to safety. Amen. With that in mind, we um, are a drop-off location for um, the Draco storm. So there's a list of items that are needed on, uh, the, I think, the Facebook page as well as our church website. Um, next week, we'll have those lists printed. The lists keep changing. Um, and I just changed again yesterday. So I will have next week a list for anybody who wants to provide stuff. Anybody that wants to make a trip to Cedar Rapids, let me know. Bless you. Um, we got to get the stuff from here to there somehow. So um, we may be able to meet somebody in Waterloo. But um, know that we have opportunities to be a blessing to others. And with that in mind, um, let's start, let's hum, not sing, but let's hum. Our next song, hymn number 130, God Will Take Care of You, 130. No matter how the world has treated us, whether we're powerful or powerless, God renews our vision and our energy, calling us to works of transformation by reflecting God's love and God's justice. Amen. I think our next hymn is hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
said we can't clap. So join us in this next song. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. God is for me, he's not a